Easter Sunday. First of all, let me just say, Easter Friday, the day of the crucifixion, at the very, very end, Jesus is on the cross. He's hanging there. And his final breath, his final words were, it is, it is, it is, it is finished. What's finished? What is finished? What is finished? Jesus said, it is finished. Oh, Lord, thank you. Father, we just commit this morning to you and we thank you for your love and for your kindness. We thank you, Lord, that you are for us and you are not against us. Father, we just commit our hearts and our minds to you this morning. Lord, speak to us in Jesus' name. Amen. It is finished. Jesus knew that he had completed his, his mission. It is finished. What is finished? Well, as I went through during the, the Holy Week, on the Monday, Jesus had walked into, uh, walked into Jerusalem, then got on the donkey and he rode in. And uh, they welcomed him. As kings do, they sit on donkeys and uh, representative of the king and they praised him, hail the king of the Jews. They threw palm trees, uh, palm leaves, palm branches down on the ground signifying of eternal life, signifying of peace, signifying everlasting life, in signifying triumph. That's what I'm looking for, triumph, triumphing. On the Tuesday, Jesus walks into the temple and he's upset, he's quite angry that they've turned the temple into a place where they, were, where they were being fraudulent, ripping people off. They were coming into the temple for that week of Passover week. You have turned this place into a den of thieves. This, is, this house is a, is a place for prayer for all nations and all peoples, everybody to come and to offer and ask for forgiveness and offer sacrifice. On the Wednesday, Mary pours out her offering with perfume on Jesus' feet. The plot by Judas as well begin to plot to betray Jesus. On the Thursday, they're together, they're having like we call the Last Supper. Maundy Thursday. The Last Supper, Jesus talks about the new covenant. Friday, the crucifixion. For God, oh Lord, the relief, for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, despising, despising the shame. And everything that went with it, all of that upon the cross, the sin of mankind, the earth went dark, and hell raided against Jesus Christ. But he withstood. And we have Sunday morning. He is risen. He is no longer there. He's risen. He is no longer there. What does that mean? That Jesus rose from the dead. What does it really mean? That Jesus rose from the dead. What does it mean for those that put their trust in him? Well, folks... Before that, God's presence used to dwell in the temple, in the place they call the Holy of Holies. Jesus has made a way for us now that the presence of God dwells within you, that he lives within you. That is worth shouting about. That is worth just praising God about this morning, yeah? Come on, let's praise God right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you so much. You live within me. So what did he defeat? He defeated sin so that we can defeat sin, so that we don't have to be a slave to sin. He defeated anxiety. Are you suffering with anxiety? Are you struggling with anxiety? I, I get quite, I get 
At times I get quite anxious. But there's been a time when I had some significant anxiety. Significant. And it just hits me in, the, in here. And in my head there's like, there's fear, there's like, you're almost like, there's this panic thing going on. It's like, oh, gee, I haven't had this before. I've had anxiety, but I haven't had this, this one. So how do we deal with that? How do we overcome that? Thank God for Jesus Christ. Thank God I can, I can sit there. Like Pastor Stephen said, put your hands out and I can, I can sit there. This is what I do. I just stop. And I think I put my focus upon Jesus Christ and his love and what he's done for me. And I just think of him. And I thank him and I speak the word of God. He says, I'll be with you always. I'll never leave you nor forsake you. And I'll sit there and this anxiety begins to dissipate out of my mind, out of my soul. And I sense the beautiful presence and the peace of God. That is only because of what Jesus has done for us. There are benefits in following Jesus. And that is his peace, his joy for us. The presence of God lives in us. The presence of God lives in you. When you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Saviour, and you, you lay down your life for him, let me tell you, he will fill you with his Holy Spirit. Now, the disciples followed Jesus. They believed in him. They believed in him. But after the resurrection of Jesus, he spoke to them and he said to them, Oh, we can have a look at this. That's fine. Acts chapter 1 and verse... Let's go to Acts chapter 1 verse 4. Go to Jerusalem and wait. Pray. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. I'm just going to jump to Acts chapter 1 verse 8. But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you will be my witnesses, telling people about me everywhere, Jerusalem, Judea, and every part of the world. God wants to fill us with his Holy Spirit. I want to pray for people later. I want to pray for people that if you have not ever received the baptism in the Holy Spirit, I want to pray for you this morning. That reminds me, I better make sure my phone's off. Thank you. So that's what, that's what God wants to do with us that have put their trust and their faith in him. He wants to fill us with his Holy Spirit. Now, maybe you're here this morning and you, you've heard about Jesus. You don't know much about Christianity or, or the Christian faith. I just want to mention on that note that we are beginning an Alpha course. Alpha is one of the a remarkable tool that, that delves into the root of Christianity and who Jesus is, why he died, why he rose from the dead, why it talks about the Holy Spirit, why is there evil, what is God's purpose. If you've never done that, and you've never done a fa even a foundational course to help you with foundations in, in Christ, Please do this. This is an amazing tool. Please see Helen, see Susan after the service and say, I want to do this. It is amazing. I've done it over 25 times because I've coordinated it. More than that now. And I never, ever get sick of it. I just love it. It's just brilliant. So the beautiful thing. So Jesus laid down his life for us. So what can we do? What does God ask of us? Love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul, with all thy strength and with all thy body. 
God calls us to love him. But also to love one another. That's what we do as believers because God's Holy Spirit is within us. God's Holy Spirit is within us. Can we have a look at John chapter 1, verse 4 and 5, please? The Word gave life to everything that was created, and His life brought light to everyone. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness can never extinguish it. God's Word is very, very powerful and very, very important. It brings life to us. It brings light to us. God's Word is... The, the Word of God is filled with amazing history, amazing culture. It's poetic. There's science in there. But most of all, it can transform your life when you put your trust in Jesus Christ. It is the roadmap to life. So what does it mean that Jesus Christ rose from the dead? Well, it means that now there is no mediator between God and man. We don't have to go to the high priest. We don't have to go and offer. We can now directly talk to our Heavenly Father because of Jesus. Jesus Christ is the mediator between God and man. There's no one else. He is your mediator. Because of him, you can talk to God. You can pray wherever, wherever you are. I pray while I'm cycling. I pray while I'm driving. I'll pray just in my living room. I'll spend time there and I'll read God's word and I'll pray. Some people think you have to go to church to pray. No, you don't. You, you don't have to go to church to pray. I okay, no, that. Church is not about coming to pray. I mean, you can, but coming to church is about, it's scriptural. It's about gathering together, coming and worshipping God together and hearing the word of God and being on mission together, being encouraged. It's important to be in the house of God. It's scriptural to be in the house of God. That's part of God's pattern. But of course, if you want a moment of prayer, I remember a time when I was in a place called Vidigolfo in the north of Italy. I was in an apartment with my family, my children, my wife, my nephew was there, and it was a bit jam-packed, you know. And it was early in the morning, it was a Sunday morning, I thought I'm going to go walk down to the, I'm in the, near the village there, and I walked down, I walked down into the church, it was a Catholic church, and I just sat. And I just begin to ponder and pray. You can pray when you're walking. Of course, we pray. So as a believer, as we've put our faith in Jesus Christ, we're a people that pray. Prayer connects us to our living God. Prayer, prayer connects us to the source of his power. Because we need power. We need power to share Christ. We need power to overcome sin. Pastor Stephen talked about how you know, he has struggled with things. And it reminded me, you know, when I came to when I came to Jesus, I was full of joy, full of peace. But don't hit my button. I remember I it's part of our family thing. It's it's called anger. I know none of you have ever struggled with anger. I'm the only one. I get that. It's okay. Anger, and it was quite, um, just things would, would just get me going, you know. And I remember just time and time again, just praying, saying, God, I just commit this to you. Help me. Help me. Continually, continually bringing that to God. And slowly, slowly, God in his grace and his mercy chipped away at that. Do I still get angry? Of course I do. But man, not like, nowhere near like I used to. 
nowhere near. It was it used to inflame me. I could, you know, I could go wild. I remember when I didn't know Jesus and someone did the wrong thing, there'd be a big punch up. That's what would happen. That's what you do, especially if, if there was an injustice. Anyway, so God delivers us. He delivers us from those areas of our lives that are not pleasing to him. Can we please go to Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2? Thank you, Dave. So what does God want us to do? How? Okay. Can we read this together? The count of two. This is all there is. It's not a big long verse. It's not a big scripture. One, two. And so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all he has done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind he will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship him. Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you which is good and pleasing and acceptable, perfect. You know, a lot of people struggle because of lack of knowledge. They don't know the benefits of God. They don't know what God has for them. But being in the Word of God and being in the house of God where we get taught how to live and, and read the Word, as we do you know, an Alpha course, other courses that go on, it helps us, it transforms our life to, so we can have the mind of Christ, so we can think how God thinks, so we know what God is thinking and how God wants us to live, how we can please our God. The greatest of all, one of the greatest that God has achieved by resurrection morning, that we have access to our living God, that he dwells within us, he lives in us, and he gives us the grace to forgive. We need to forgive ourselves. We need to ask God for forgiveness, and he forgives us. Not possibly, not maybe, but he does forgive us. When God says you have eternal life, it means you have eternal life. When God says you're forgiven, that means you're forgiven. That means don't bring it back up. Don't bring it back up. Don't keep reminding God of what, you've, what you did two or three years ago. God chooses to remember that no more. God loves you. God forgives you. Maybe this morning you're here and you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Let me say to you this morning that he wants to come into your life. He wants to live inside of you. He wants to make himself real to you. And what enslaves you, let me tell you, God will break that. God will set you free. Because that's why he came, to set us free. That's what he achieved when he died upon the cross. Resurrection life achieves breaking sin of your life, breaking those behaviours that you struggle with. Jesus says, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. He loves you. He cares for you. He is not against you, but he is for you. For God did not send his son in the world to condemn you, but that you might have life and have life more abundantly. <laughs> 